2 Kings chapter 4. Now there cried a certain widow, certain woman. Try that again. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets. The sons of the prophets. The prophets going around, prophets of God. And they would help the people. They would guide the people. And God would speak to them. Many prophets around. Not just Elijah, uh, Elijah, uh, Isaiah, Elisha, Elijah. I mean, there is no confirmed written word. Not everybody has the five books of, of Moses. And God would speak to these men and they would be signs to Israel because Israel required signs. So they would go to the seer. And today you would have the imitation, you know, you go to a woman that's in a tent and she'll look at her crystal ball or read your tea leaves and knock you on the head, put your bumps on your head and stuff like that. That's not today. We have a confirmed 66 books of the Bible. So here's a woman. She's a wife of the sons of the prophets and the sons would probably be the prophets still. And the wife of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha. There he is. Elijah's gone. He's raptured. Now it's Elijah. And we're going to start seeing Elijah as the prophet. And he's going to fulfill the double portion of Elijah's uh, ministry. And we'll see that part a little bit tonight, but more so tomorrow night, the Lord tarries. Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Okay, so her husband was the sons of the prophets and a servant to Elijah. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. That's her husband. So he has a reputation among Elijah. As a man of God, he's a servant, and he feared the Lord. And the creditor is come to take him, take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. Now there were debts. This woman is now a widow. She's got two sons. Bills are racking up. She's not going to go out and get a job like modern America. And when you read the law, the law stated that you were supposed to be helping the widows. Because they don't have that vantage point no more. There is no husband in the house, no father in that house. And evidently by reading this, in the land of Israel north, they are not obeying the law. This woman should be getting help. The creditors come. The man that comes for the bills. Hey, you owe. And what they would do back then is, all right, you can't pay your bill. Your two sons, they're going to be put to servitude. They're going to work to pay off the debt. And that was the early parts of America, too. You had a debt. You would call it debtor's prison. You would go to prison. You would work off that debt. And now here comes the two sons. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? What do you want? Tell me what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid has not anything in the house save a pot of oil. That's a lot. I'm kind of being sarcastic. The only thing she's got is a pot of oil. That's it. And the creditor is coming, and she has nothing. What do you have in your house? She doesn't even have money. She didn't say, I have two coins. I have two farthings. I Maybe a bag of silver. I don't have nothing. And if this is the case, and it's not, uh, you know, extraordinary that, you know, no, oh, I have the pot of oil, and maybe she's got furniture or that. Maybe the fact is she's, she's by now sold, uh, sold things. To pay off debts. And now she's got to the point right now. She can't. Anything else. She has not. That may be the case. We're not told. But he says. What do you have? She says. I have a pot of oil. And he said. Elisha. Go. Well that's a great commandment. Throughout the Bible. Go. Abram. Go from your family. Go in all the world. And preach the gospel. He even told Elijah, go anoint this man, go anoint, the, and he didn't. And we'll see Elijah do that. Go. So don't sit on your fanny. Go. 
I'm not going to whip into my pockets and give you. Go. Borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. So I want you to go in your neighborhood. I want you to get every kind of vest you get. Small ones, little ones, big ones. Borrow. You're not going to keep them. But borrow. Every, I'm excuse me, even empty vessels. Okay, what we're going to need, we don't need full vessels. We don't need half vessels. We need empty vessels. Borrow not a few. Get a lot of them. And God wants from us empty vessels that he can fill with the Holy Spirit. He doesn't want us vessels to be, all right, here, I got some vessels with rice. No, God, no. No rice. I need empty ones. Well, I got some vessels here. I got some olives in it. No, no. I don't need olives. I need empty ones. And God does not want vessels of us. Well, I got a world. No, God doesn't want that vessel. He wants us clean and he wants us empty so he can fill us. The oil is a type of Holy Spirit in the Bible. That would probably be olive oil or oil olive. That's hard for me to say. I'm trying to use the Bible words. So this picture is a type of Christian. Give God all your empty vessels that he may fill it. Don't give him vessels that are half full, quarter full, minute full. He wants empty ones that he can fill with the pure of the Holy Spirit. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons. And Jesus, an illustration for us, he would say, go into your prayer closet and shut the door. How's that? Get off by yourself with that clean, empty vessel. Got to be clean, too. Not going to do you no good if, those, if these vessels are filthy. And go shut that door with your family. You better get your family. And this is like the Passover lamb. You grab a lamb for your house. You don't take that lamb house to house to house and house. You don't take it over there. And, and if your neighbors can't don't have enough, for, you bring them into your house. This door also where the blood was put across. Jesus said, I am the door. So this picture would be a great illustration for us Christians. Get yourself your empty vessel. Clean it out that God may use it with the Holy Spirit. Get in by yourself. Get in your prayer closet and start praying and start doing to God. And bring your family in. And shall pour out into all those vessels. So, you got your whole house, hopefully, all filled with vessels. Close that door. No one else is to see what goes on. Don't you make a show of it. Don't you make a bragging of it. You just go in with your family. You close that door. All right, you fill with oil. Son, give me another one. You put that one off to the side. You grab the other one. You put oil in. You put it up. All right, put that over there. And give me the next empty one. That's what's going to happen. Thou shalt set aside that which is full. When you fill it, fill it all the way to the top. Almost to the point that you're going to maybe going to spill it as you move it. Um, I'm reminded, John chapter, I think it's, and this is throughout the whole Bible, but John chapter, where is the marriage? John chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. Maybe how the Lord shows me as I'm reading. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. Fill them up. What did they do? And they filled them up to the brim, to the fullest, to the full, they filled it. Jesus said, fill it. They said, okay, let's go right to the brim. That's what we ought to do. Get as much as the Holy Spirit God will give you and let it overflow to other people. And it would be taken for granted here, fill them as high as you can get. Rather have some spill and run over the edge, then you know what? You never had enough. Set aside that which is full. 
Again, not half full, not a quarter full, not an eighth full. Do it full. So she went from him, Elisha, and shut the door upon her and upon her sons. Now, I don't mean that, you know, in the doorway she closed them. I mean, they got in the house and they closed the door. Who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. Now, it's a sacrifice for her children. There's work. Give me the vessel. Here, take this vessel. This oil could have been used for her children. To make a meal. We came across a woman. She's out gathering two sticks. She said, I'm going to take a little oil. I'm going to take a little, I got a little cruise of oil. I got a little meal. I'm going to make a, a cake and then we're going to drive. This woman is also operating by faith. She has no idea what's going to happen this man is a man of God. He's a prophet of God. And I'm hoping he's by the word of God saying what he's doing. This is also a miracle. This is also a sign. All right. I got a pot of oil. You want me to go out and get a whole bunch of other vessels? Why? Because I'm only going to empty one pot to fill another pot. And then one pot's going to be empty that was full, and this one's going to be full that wasn't full. And it, what, what are we, what, what's going on here? And she does not question Elisha. Go get all these vessels from your neighbors. She doesn't say, well, that doesn't comprehend. That's not going to work. It's almost like she's got in her heart array what God's going to do for her. Okay, I'm going to do it. Well, she, she's related to it. She's related to the prophet. She's seen God work. So there's no question. Listen, there are things in our life God says, okay, this is what you do. And we don't question God. Do it. And she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full. So she filled them. She said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Okay, came to the very last one we borrowed. We filled that last one up. She said, son, all right, give me another one. Son, take that up. Okay, okay, mom, move it over here. Mom, we ain't got no more. They're all filled with that. Now the whole house has got vessels. We don't know how many, but they're just filled with oil. And the son reaches over. And that's it, mom. We got the last one. We can't go run out the doors. We cannot go to the neighbors of the store. And, and we need more. No, that was it. So where is her faith? The oil stayed. That was it. Then she came and told the man of God. She got a whole house full of oil. And she comes to Elisha. Okay, I've done exactly what you told me to do. And he said, go sell the oil and pay thy debt. Okay? Take what you have. Go sell it. Pay that debt off. Well, now, we don't know how much that debt is, but she's got enough. And Elisha says, pay that debt off. And live thou and thy children off of the rest. So she has brought more and got as much as she can that she's paid that debt off. Now she's got more that she can live off the Lord and live off her, for her sons and living off what Elijah's told her to do by the excess. And you clean all the pots up and all the bowls and whatever she got and give them back to the neighbors. And the neighbors would be looking at her like they were going to take her house. You see her boys? Look, I've just seen her boys. It's been two or three weeks. It's been two or three months. I thought the debt were going to... Hey, what's your testimony? What's going on? What, what happened? Well, the Lord took care of me. Remember those vessels I borrowed from you? What a great testimony. Just kept going, just kept going, and I, I sold them. The bills are paid. Who else could have done that? No one but God. It's Now, do you remember with Elijah? Elijah meets this woman. She's out there. I'm picking up two steps. I'm in two sticks. I'm going to make a cake, a cake, and my son and I are going to die. Elijah says to her, go make me a cake first. And then the meal and the oil is not going to end. It's going to suffice for all of us. And it did. So now we start seeing Elijah moving into the office of Elijah. And we see the story here of, of oil. 
Again, that oil is a type of the Holy Spirit. There were ten virgins. Five of them had enough oil when the Lord came. Five of them, where they say, go buy the oil. She didn't buy the oil. The God supplied her with the oil. And it fell on a day that Elijah passed to Shinnom, Shinnom, where was a great woman, well known. People know who she is. She constrained, that's the first time that word shows up, him to eat bread. You, Elijah, come here. Yes, ma'am. I've got some food here. Sit down and eat. Oh, thank you. She knows who Elijah is, and Elijah knows who she is. We've got an illustration here. I mean, she's not a widow, she's married. Well, we got an illustration. Here is a woman that Paul told Timothy about widow. She has fed the saints. Here she is. And when her husband would die, if he dies before she does, she would be, be taken care of. She's feeding the, the prophets, Elisha. And it was so that as oft, that's the first time that word shows up, oft, as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. So he's walking down the road, and he's like, hey, guys, let's go over here. What's over here? Here's a woman that's taking care of me. I've stopped in any, any other time on my, on my route, on my challenges, and, hey, she takes care of us. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is a holy man of God, and he is. So the character and the conduct and the activities and the well-being of Elijah, she says to her husband, this man's a man of God. He's proper. He does what he's supposed to do. He's a proper representative of God, and it shows. Which passes by us continually. Now, that's not complaining. Every time he's in the area, he comes in here, he takes care of us, and we take care of him. Let us make a little chamber. A little room, I pray thee, on the wall. That's kind of funny because let's go to Joshua 2.15. Joshua 2.15. Kind of about, but a little helpful. Joshua 2.15 talking about Rahab in her house. 2.15, then she let them down by a cord through the window all right so she's up high and her house was upon the town wall and she dwelt upon the wall so that room where she lives that apartment whatever she had is on the wall so here we got on the wall what does it exactly mean it means on the wall <laughs> i can't elaborate anymore I don't know if they put a section on the wall, if they had an addition, but on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, a place to rest, take a nap, sleep. We are, you know, we are to sleep. Your body needs sleep. If you don't sleep, you're going to die from lack of sleep. And a table. Well, you need somewhere to, to be, to have your food, have your reading material, maybe write a letter, and a stool. Well, you need somewhere to sit, and a candlestick. Well, you need light. Now, look at the things that she says that we need. We need a bed, we need a table, we need a stool and a candlestick. Anything else? She thought, hey, that's the basic necessities for this man of God. Don't give him a couch. Don't give him a, I know there was no radios, but, you know, give him a place to take a nap, give him a bed. It's almost like a motel. And what do you basic motels have? It has a bed, it has a table, it has a chair, and it has a light. And what she's saying to her husband about Elijah, listen, he comes into town, he's been here, we feed him, we take care of him. Let's give him a room so he doesn't have to buy a room, a hotel, an inn. We're going to bring more for Elijah than what is written about Jesus. There was no room for him at the inn. 
How's that? I don't know if I can say it, but the light was for him. Was for him. So let him come, let him rest, let him study the scriptures, let him write a letter, let him have a meal. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in thither. So we'll give him a place. We'll take care of him when he's in the area. And it fell on a day that when that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and laid there. So see, look, this is my room. I would assume that maybe there were other prophets she would take care of, but right now we're focused on Elisha. He goes in there and he takes a little nap. He lie there. And he said to Gehiza, and this guy's going to show up later. He's going to go bad. His servant called the Shemunite, and that's the woman. And when she had, and when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said, on, and he said unto him, "Say now unto her." Now he's not talking to her. He's talking to Gehazi. Gehazi, be be between me and her. I don't know why, but say now unto her, behold, thou hast been careful, and that's the first time that word shows up. Care, full of care. That's like those those pots of oil. They were full of oil. So when we run 13 verses, we see this woman is not full of oil. She's full of care. And when Elijah would come, those sheets would be changed. If there's sheets, the table would be clean, it would be dusted, and he would have a meal ready for him. Careful for us. So there was not just Elijah, but his parties. With all this care. Again, he's saying full of care. What is to be done for thee? I don't know what her name is, but Miss Shumanite, what would you like me to do for you? All this you're taking care of us. We haven't paid you. David says, I will not serve the Lord unless I have paid. And that's what Elijah's saying. Elijah right now. Hey, what do you want? Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king? Would you have any matters that I can address to King? I can, because he knows the King. I can walk in there and say, King, this Shumanite, fill in the blanks. Whatever that King can grant, half the kingdom, they say throughout the Bible. I can speak to the King for you. Or to the captain and the host. How about the army? Anybody threaten you? Anybody bothering you and your husband? And I? I can go to the army. I can go to the captain the army. They can send their soldiers over here, and they won't. Nobody's gonna mess with you guys. How's that? I can get the king of the country, or I can get the military leader of the country. What do you need? What is it? Anything that I'm able to do? And she she answered, "I dwell among my own people. I, listen, I, I'm content." I, I'm, I don't have need of the king. I don't have need of the army. I'm happy. My husband and I are happy where we are. And he said, what then is to be done for her? And he turns to the hills. Okay, so we got to reward her somehow. And when somebody has done you well, and someone's taken care of your ministry, and somebody has helped you in the ministry, take care of them. Help them. Don't, take, don't ride the free wagon. It costs money to make that chamber. It costs time to make his meal and to clean that room. Nothing's free. And Gehazi answered, Verily she has no child, and her husband is old. Now, does that sound familiar? <laughs> We're going to go in the realm of Sarah. We're going to go in the realm of Elizabeth. Anna. Anna. It's the only thing I can say, Elisha, what's that? She ain't got no son. And there's got to be something about this woman and her husband that of all the things they have, that Gehazi says, there's one. there's something we can do. What can we do? Uh, uh, what can I, 
I, Elijah, you know anything I can think of? What's that? That woman is so wonderful. That woman is so loving. If she only had a son that she doesn't have. And that would be the character of this woman by Gehazi that, oh, the love she can show. Look at the love she's showing us, Elijah. Imagine what she does for us and for her husband and the people around that people know her. Imagine what, <coughs> excuse me. Imagine what she could do with a child. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace, that's the first time that word shows up, embrace a son. Let's go to Genesis 18.10. And there's more to this woman than meets the eye that we're going to read about. Genesis 18, verse 10. I fight with my pages here. Genesis 18, 10. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. Verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time of point, I will return to thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. That's God speaking. Elijah is quoting God when it comes to this woman being barren as Sarah in that time of life. And I'm going to be clean, but when your husband and you come together, <laughs> you're going to be pregnant. When that angel speaks to John the Baptist's father, he says, you, you guys are old. You and your wife are going to have a baby. When they come together, there's pregnancy. So the time of life, that's a Bible way of saying sex education. When you and your husband come together and to produce a baby, there it is. Time of life. Thou shalt embrace a son. Well, this is like Jesus and Mary. You're gonna get you're gonna be pregnant, you're going to embrace a son. It's like your wife is old, you're old, and you're going to have a son, and you're going to name his name John. Now, this child's never named. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God. <laughs> That's saying sarcasm. She just said, I, I consume that this man's a man of God. You're going to be pregnant. Yeah, right, man of God. Well, knock it off, will you? She's taking it as a joke. That's exactly how Sarah acted. John's father acted like that. And, got, and the angel said, you're not going to speak for nine months. Mary took it more well. Mary said, as, as the Lord said to her handmaid, let it be. I said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace the son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid. Oh. She's lucky Elijah didn't call, didn't curse her, and then had the three she beers come out. Elijah took it well. And the woman conceived. <laughs> They're old. And the Bible says, the woman conceived. Now, can you imagine that moment? <laughs> and bear a son at that season, nine months, that Elijah has sent unto her according to the time of life. So there, that time of life, they conceived. <laughs> you know what it takes for a woman and a man for her to conceive. Then there's nine, you know, basically nine months, just plus or minus, and boom, there's the time of life. There's Illustration and this child, though we don't know much about him, he's we're going to get the resurrection. These children are born like this miraculously, are types of John the Baptist and a type of Jesus Christ. 
And we need to look at them. We're going to stop right there. We're going to let this woman have this child a little, little longer. 24 hours. <laughs> because something's going to happen. And Lord willing, we'll get to the close of the story. But I think this would be a good time right now. But let her embrace that child in her arms. And if you want, it's just another great more study to do with the rest of this chapter. And we'll take it in a break. But we have one woman who doesn't have a husband. He's dead. And the debtor's coming to, to collect. We have a woman who has a husband, and it seems like she's got they got enough money to say, hey, let's give this man a room, let's give him board, let's give him a table, let's give him a bed, let's give him a candlestick, let's give him food. We got a woman who doesn't have a husband. The creditors are coming, and she's got two sons. They're going to be taken away. We got a woman here. She's got a husband. She's taking care of her. Things are well. She's well known. She doesn't have a son. We got a woman here. She's got to get empty vessels. She's got to fill the oil for God to use her and to pay that debt. And then we got this other woman, she's filling the prophet. She's taking care of his needs. The first woman, she gets her debt paid off. Her and her children have enough more to survive and live on. And we don't read anything else about that. We, you realize how much we don't know that she got? That, hey, go live on the rest. We're not told how long. And we got this woman, this great woman, she comes along. She takes care of the prophet. She supplies his need and maybe other prophets. I don't know. And then she gets this wonderful thing. She gets to finally hold a child. Two different women, two different, and they're both going to be blessed by God. The woman we're looking at right now, she's going to have something going to happen to her that not too many mothers have had happen. The resurrection. But the woman that had the two sons, she was going to lose him. And who knows if she would ever got him back. We don't know how big that debt was. But she got to keep the boys. This great woman, Ashimah, she has a baby. We're going to jump ahead of the story. That baby's going to die. That young, that young son's going to die. That's it. Oh, man. Death. And yet that son's going to be resurrected and be brought back into her arms. Miraculous, wonderful, great. How can people not read the Bible? 